the 2048 game that I was doing earlier. So in the 2048 game, um, what we have to do is we are given like a starting grid like this. You can move up, down, left, right. And then your aim is to form like as high a number as possible. When you combine the, the cells together, it merges. So let's just run this code from the beginning. So I mean, if you are interested to, to know what this code does, you can check out my earlier video where I run through it. So the first thing that I did just now, um, it's just about an hour back, was a random AI where it just like from the given state, it just randomly moves. And then you see, wow, it ended up with like 1380 score. Not too bad. So for the Monte Carlo AI, what I did differently was because I realized the game depth could be up to like a thousand. So in order to minimize the amount of compute that we need, we could take a proxy of like a half soft state. We cut off the playthrough at a certain depth and just take the total score from that depth as our proxy for how good that state is. So indeed, if the state is good enough, okay, like at a certain depth, you should get a higher score than the other moves. So how this Monte Carlo works is that it picks a move up, down, left, right, okay? And then if it's valid, it plays to the next state, okay? So the next state will be called like Monte Carlo state, which will be different for each of the moves. So it's like, for example, this state, if we move left, the Monte Carlo state, this uh, two will go here. If we move down, both twos will be at the bottom. Move right, this two will come to here and become a four. And then move up uh, is an invalid move because there's no change in bot state. So based on the Monte Carlo bot states, we then run through this playthrough to a certain depth. Okay, and then we basically see what's the best score. Okay, and then we just pick the move, like I eat in the valid moves, either up, down, left, or right, with, with the highest score. So this means that given that starting move, I just move randomly after that starting move, and it appears to be a good result. And that's why we have um and then that's why we choose that certain move. So just now I I did 100 tries uh to a max depth of infinity actually. Um earlier on I didn't have this max step. I just added in this max step and then uh have this extra condition here to terminate the game. Okay. And um basically that enabled me to already solve the problem of um two zero four eight. So actually I <laughs> I managed to solve all the way until four four one nine six quite reliably with this. I tried I was trying eight one nine two but uh that didn't really work out. So I'm quite keen to get this to work on eight one nine two. That is a bot depth of 4096 depth. I wonder if that will work. But it seems that this simple Monte Carlo approach seems to work pretty well. Uh, so with, with this time with 200 tries and max depth 10, okay, I let it run and it managed to reach 4096. Okay, so it was a little bit more to 8192. So that's something that uh, will be interesting to try out. But it can reliably reach 2048 already. So let's see how fast this runs. I'm just going to go back to max try 100 and uh, max depth 10. And then we see, like, this is how fast it runs. Look at it. It's running, like, almost a speed of, like, less than a second per move. Maybe 0 0.2 seconds to 0, maybe about 0 0.5 seconds per move. And it is, to, to me, I feel it's pretty reliable. I mean, just 100 evaluations per, per move. And then we evaluate to a depth of 10 is already sufficient to get to 2048 most of the time. Okay, of course, if we want to be more precise, we could increase the number of tries, which will increase the accuracy of the Monte Carlo estimate. So yeah, I mean, if you are interested about what's Monte Carlo, it's a very useful method uh, where basically, like, if you don't know what is the distribution or function, like for example, you don't know what's this like area of the circle, uh, area of the circle, you could just randomly drop in points and then you can just label like, is it within the circle or outside of the circle? So if we were to do this, we can actually estimate the area of this quadrant with that. The higher, the more number of points, the more accurate. And then we can estimate like maybe the value of pi just by using this uh, like random sample samples. You don't even need to know how this curve is plotted. Yeah, so uh, Monte Carlo was used initially to like solve stuff like uh, for example like how to play um blackjack <laughs> that they did like a million simulations from that particular card hand to see whether you should hit or stay so in in, in our game monte carlo is used to evaluate like after we move a certain move like up down left or right we then evaluate the monte carlo state which is the state after we move this first move 
And then we see how good that move is, or how good that bot state is, just by randomly playing through the rest. Of course, if you already know some heuristics to use, you could actually improve the accuracy of this Monte Carlo estimate. But just by using totally random moves, it, it actually is quite good already. So a Monte Carlo estimate with no extra heuristics at all or no extra knowledge of the game, just playing randomly and then playing a few games, taking the average, can achieve a solution that is quite competitive, provided that you try enough times. Okay, ideally, we want to go all the way to the end of the game but in this case, because we have a proxy reward, we have this total game score, which is like when you combine the tiles together, you will actually add that score to the max score. So actually, that is a proxy to how good the bot state is. The higher the max score, the higher the total score at that current bot state, the better the bot. So we could use that as a proxy to like the end of the game. So because I tried, <laughs> if we don't have a max depth, it takes very, very long. Like for num tries 100, it takes about 2 to 3 seconds per move at the beginning. Okay, so now we can see that um, it's still evaluating. So with num tries 100 and max depth of 10, it's still, it's still working out. So I'm just um, showing like these states here. Okay, so be, uh, like while we are looking through this, let me just check something. <laughs> can you check this min <laughs> Uh I'll check it out later, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, if, you, if you look at this, um, this Monte Carlo search itself is so useful, okay, that like I didn't even code like what's a good bot state. I didn't even say like, okay, you have empty blanks here is good or you need to have like four sticking to each other is good. All these are like man-made heuristics where, you know, you can add more and more heuristics to it to make, if your heuristics are right, it can narrow down the search space and you can get the solution faster. Okay, but if your heuristics are wrong, you might end up not getting um, the right moves. Okay, that's why, you know, uh, when we have Deep Blue for chess, it's a minimax algorithm. Okay, it's not really Monte Carlo, it's a minimax algorithm that use a lot of heuristics, okay, to, to beat the world's top uh, player. But then we also have stuff like Alpha Zero that managed to beat Deep Blue. Okay, in Alpha Zero, uh, what happened was that they basically use like a Monte Carlo tree search is a, is a variant of that Monte Carlo. And then with no heuristics at all, just by using random moves and then like storing. So Alpha Zero is a bit uh, more advanced than this. I could also quote some, sim something similar is when you explore using Monte Carlo tree search, you don't like forget what you explored. You like actually learn that and you put that in your memory so that you can use that catch value of what you evaluated in your, in your training games. You can use that to evaluate bot states better so like maybe this bot state could be evaluated more precisely if we keep running the algorithm of alpha zero again and again because we store it in a neural network to estimate this bot state okay bot state and also there's a policy um state also to tell you like what are the more probable squares to choose from so uh sorry that's for go but in uh in in this uh, 2048 it'll be like what are the more uh, better moves to choose from is it up now left or right you could have a policy network as well so using neural networks to like help to bootstrap the estimate so that you see now I artificially truncated it at a max depth of 10. If like, you use neural networks, okay, this max depth, of, uh, this estimate over here will be more and more and more reliable. And so eventually you will be able to be improve and become a better player like all the way at the start of the game because your estimate will be very accurate even at the start if you run the algorithm many times. But here we don't need to do that. Here we just <laughs> use a native Monte Carlo with just uh, 100 samples per move to a max depth of 10, you can see that, wow, look at that. That score is like amazing, 30,000. I, I was quite impressed actually. Like after I ended my stream for dinner, I just basically spent about one minute adding this line of code, like this one, this one, and then I added a max depth of 10. I left, left, left it to run. Even before I started dinner, I already solved the problem. So I was pretty happy. And yeah, that's why I wanted to, you know, capture the moment and just like stream this results to just show you how happy I am with this Monte Carlo. Uh, one, uh, one improvement I, I can think of is to do something like Monte Carlo tree search, where you have rather than just like scoring, uh, having like hundred trials on the same like branch, you could choose which branch to, ex um, to explore based on a certain score. So you could 
choose the branch to explore. So you could like choose branch to explore. Okay, based on current average reward, or, and then plus a certain exploration term. So if you haven't explored that branch for a long time, your exploration term will be very huge. So you can do some explore exploit uh, optimization so that in like the limited number of moves, let's say you have total of 400 uh, tries, rather than exploring each branch with 100 times um, in, uh, equally, you actually prioritize certain branches to look deeper into that you think that are the more promising branches. So if we could do something like this to mimic the first level of Monte Carlo tree search, I think it will perform better. So my aim right now is no longer 2048. I would like to, okay, so over here, you can see that in the top here, the win element initially here was 2048. <laughs> I changed it to 8192 because I'm a bit more ambitious now. Okay, I'm not going to go for an easy solve of 2048. We will solve 8192. Okay, and uh, I probably will do that like uh, over the week. Yeah, but we'll try to solve 8192. Okay. So now let's take a look at like how this algorithm works and ta-da, you see 2048. So it has achieved actually quite reliably. I ran this four times, <laughs> all four times it achieved 2048. So it's quite reliable. And uh, perhaps if I reduce the number of tries here, maybe it can still reach. Okay, but I haven't really tried that. Uh, there's some hyperparameters to tune here for Monte Carlo. So Uh, let's see, Monte Carlo AI is done. So maybe so uh, the next AI that I'll be probably coding, okay, uh, not now because uh, I've, got, I've got to go already, uh, will probably be something like Monte Carlo tree search base. Look at this, solve the game in like less than five minutes. That's quite amazing. Yeah, sorry, I, I don't have my phone with me, so I look at the comments now. Do you know the formula cap rate? Do you know the formula of cap? Sorry, what do you mean by cap rate over here? Yeah, no, I'm not a Chinese gangster, yeah. I'm from Singapore, yeah. So, uh, you're talking about this, is it? The the depth. Uh, depth 10 means like you look 10 moves ahead. like And then you do a random simulation up to there. Yeah, so yeah, the the more depth you go, the 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 further you can see, I guess, for the game. But also the less accurate it can be because if you were to just use random moves, okay, uh, after ten depth, right, the the number of moves for depth is actually four to the power of ten. Okay, that's about one million moves. So <laughs> if we just sample like maybe hundred, um it can be quite difficult to really get a true estimate of what that state is. Okay, so any more than 10, it will be less and less accurate for the for the score. But yeah, I, I was trying around like 10 seemed to work pretty well and like 100 seemed to be okay. So yeah, it could be, it could be tuned a bit more. I'll probably release this on my GitHub soon. Yeah, I'll try to solve 8192 first, then I release it. Quite pleased with this. So the next thing I'll do is this Monte Carlo research based AI. Uh, this Minimax ish is from my friend. Uh, I think he had uh, an idea to use Minimax, but it was quite hard to get it to work for this. Okay, so yep. All right. Thanks so much for viewing, and yep, I'll catch you around next time. Bye bye.